everybody needs to realize that academic medicine is long-term stuff. But for young clinicians, I think the really most important thing is that they, they mustn't be put off by people who are telling them that uh, they should get on and become a surgeon, become an obstetrician, you know, get through it all and, um, and get on with the practice of medicine. Uh, they, they've got to understand that they need to invest in themselves and this takes a long time and people understand it takes a long time and they look after them. So this actually means that patronage is important. People at the top who are really sympathetic and really supportive. And you find in places I've talked about earlier, like the Hammersmith Hospital, for example, that there was that kind of patronage. People, the professors of medicine, really took a long-term view of their, of their young people um, and, uh, and sustained them through the ups and downs of the uh, research process. The challenge of dealing with, the, with patients with those problems where medicine is just one like one segment of the, um, the caring process. Uh, the whole, all of life revolves around that person, their family, their social circumstances, etc. And medicine has to fit in with that. Um, it's not the old dominant um, process that it, it was, for example, in the case of. Uh, acute illness like pneumonia, where a person was ill, got pneumonia, needed treatment, would get better. Um, the doctor and the hospital were absolutely centre stage in that. Compare that with somebody who's uh, got heart failure, who relapses at the time of an infection, is admitted to the hospital, goes home, arthritis control, it's going to get worse again, etc. The whole, the whole dynamic of medicine is altered. I saw a thing in the, uh, somewhere just a couple of days ago, which now the cost of Alzheimer's exceeds that of, of, uh, of cancer and cardiovascular disease combined in the US. Big challenge. The patients who suffer from rare diseases are often marvelous advocates for uh, research into them. In the UK, for example, as in other countries, give examples of people with Duchenne muscular dystrophy, um, people with cystic fibrosis, people with Gaucher's disease, uh, and many other such rare diseases have very active uh, patient groups. Because their diseases are rare and they're different, they get very well informed about them and their problems. And you often see a very healthy dialogue between people um, in those who are in the organizations that they attend, like the CF Foundation, Cystic Fibrosis, and the academic medical community. And the, um, the patients are very powerful advocates. Um, and I think there's a lesson there for, um, for the much more common diseases, where, again, it varies. I mean, by and large, patients, I think, are pretty supportive of, of the big, some big diseases like cancer. But there are other areas where um, patient groups are not as effective. For example, psychiatry. Um, although, fortunately, there's a bit of change of mood in, in not to abuse the pun, in psychiatric, where uh, people are now starting to talk about their illness. Until recently, the stigmatization of psychiatry was so great that people who had psychiatric illness wouldn't say so. Uh, in the UK, there's a very famous um, actor, broadcaster, called Stephen Pry, who's suffered from bipolar um, uh, disease, and he talks about it, and he's become an advocate for it. And that kind of thing helps enormously. I think clinician scientists are pretty important in all aspects of healthcare. You could argue that all conditions are being scientists whenever they practice medicine. I mean, I sometimes think that clinicians who don't claim to be scientists are actually more often doing science than scientists are. 
if you're a scientist, you may do some experiments that might take months or even years to accumulate information. You then look at it all, analyze it, gathering facts, formulating a hypothesis, testing the hypothesis with certain tests. And if they confirm it, then a course of action follows. That's a scientific process. So science is actually built into the practice of medicine. That ranges from understanding of fundamentals of how organisms are formed, the structure and DNA, the basis of heredity, through to major epidemiological um, discoveries like the relationship between smoking and lung cancer. Um, all that was based upon a scientific process.